2014 marks the 50th anniversary of the first Surgeon General's report on smoking and health. This series of videos celebrates the progress made and the work still to be done to end tobacco-related disease and death and to make the next generation tobacco-free. In March 2012, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention launched a national tobacco education campaign, Tips from Former Smokers. I'm married, and I used to be a smoker. I don't want anybody to go through what I've been through or what I'm going through. I think that's why we all did it is so others don't go through what we personally went through, but also our loved ones. Um, again, it's not just us, it's the whole family that's affected. And I think that's what people need to remember, that when they're smoking, you know, who's gonna be there when you're sick? And you know, you gotta remember that, and so you gotta make the effort to quit. Roosevelt, Terry, and Brandon know firsthand how powerful nicotine addiction is. When I was having my issues and I was actually having heart attacks, I actually took time out to actually smoke a cigarette during the heart attacks. And then once I became involved in a campaign, and I think the most shocking one for me was Brandon, that they told me about the Burgers disease and I had never heard of it or anything like that. And I was like, wow, well, you know, how could this guy, you know, lose a limb and still continue smoking? First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. I'm saying to myself, if it was me, if I lose a finger because I'm smoking, I'm going to stop. But when, in retrospect, look at what I was doing, you know, and I still continued smoking even after my surgery and things like that. I think a lot of American teenagers and even the young adults think the same thing. They think that they are not addicted and they always tell themselves that lie that I can quit whenever I'm ready because I'm not even addicted. Newsflash, you are addicted. The strength of the TIPS campaign has been its ability to give smokers hope that they can quit and resources to help them quit. When I saw it, I thought, I can't believe I did that. And then I started crying because I felt that it was really powerful. And now you're ready for the name. But I had no idea of the impact it was going to have. What's been overwhelming for me, really honestly, has been the people that have come up and said, thank you, and um, I'm going to cry. They've said thank you, and um, and said that because of you, I quit smoking. And you know, to me, that's what the program, the campaign was all about, was to help save lives. This video is a production of the Office of the Surgeon General and CDC's Office on Smoking and Health. For more information, go to surgeongeneral.gov.